72. <laughs> yeah. Some days it seems like it. Oh, he has always been just old for his age. He just, he, I don't know. Do you have any citizen or public comments of anything that's not on the agenda for tonight? Seeing none, I'd just like to welcome everyone here. Uh, we'll have a consideration of approval of the agenda, but we do have one deletion on the agenda. Item 10C will be deleted for tonight. We <coughs> some paper documentation hasn't gotten completed yet, so we would I'd have a motion for the... I'd move for approval of the agenda as amended. Second. Clerk will call the roll. Jaeger. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Next is uh, consideration of approval of the minutes of the November 5th meeting. Any questions on the minutes? So move. Second. I was here. Clerk will call the roll. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. <laughs> I forgot you. You get a little stumped up there? Kind of. Next is consideration of uh, approval of the consent calendar for tonight. Any questions <coughs> there? So moved. Second. Further discussion? Clerk will call the roll. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Yeager. No. Friesman. Aye. This is on to business of the mayor. I just have the one item um, tonight is for... Um, Proclamation for Transgender Remembrance Day on November 20th. Do we have somebody to speak to that tonight? Should be fine, yep. Hi, my name is Jessamy Urquhart. I'm the Executive Director of Transcend, which is a nonprofit organization uh, that started out here in Charles City. We support the transgender, non binary, and gender non conforming community. Uh, we also are in Mason City and Waterloo. Uh, we submitted this uh, <coughs> to be a, a proclamation because we feel it's really important to remember the lives that have been lost uh, of transgender people over the past year. According to the Trans Murder Moder Monitoring Research Project, 369 trans people were murdered in the past year. Uh, that is astronomical and it is absolutely something that some people should be more aware of. So uh, tonight we would just like to Thank you for uh, making this part of your agenda, and we hope to see more people in Charles City being aware of this issue and taking steps to help alleviate it. Any questions? Any questions for Jessamy? No. Thank you. <coughs> so moved. Second. Any further discussion or questions? <coughs> Clerk will call the roll. Malero. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Motion passes. I'll come down and read the proclamation. <coughs> come over here, maybe. So whereas we wish to honor the memories of transgender people who have died due to violence throughout the year, and whereas it is important not only to remember those whose lives were cut short, but to acknowledge the disproportionate amount of violence and homicide the transgender community faces, and whereas as ally, allies we need to work diligently to reduce the prejudice and discrimination that leads to violence against the transgender community, and whereas part of that work includes bringing to light issues that may otherwise stay unrecognized. Therefore, I, Honorable Dean Andrews, Mayor of America's hometown, Charles City, Iowa, hereby declare November 20th, 2018 to be observed in Charles City, Iowa as Transgender Day of Remembrance in honor of those lost this year and in hopes that it begins to pave the way for acceptance, inclusion, and safety for transgender people. In testimony whereof, I have hereunto subscribed my name this 19th day of November 2018. So we realize that um, you know this is a growing concern in our in our society, and and you know we want to uh, make our society free for all people to you know live their lives as they as they see fit. So uh, this is a good a um, 
good proclamation to remember those who have lost their lives in this past year. So thank you. I'll give you that. And thank you. Right. Next is a request for street closures and use of city property for the <coughs> Thursday before Christmas event on December 20th. We have someone to speak for that one. Good evening. Thanks for uh, hearing us again. Just a recap from last year. We, uh, we just saw sorry. Your, uh, name is uh, Joe Lowe. I'm the youth pastor at the Gospel Lighthouse Church. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry. <laughs> and. Uh, we thought we had a good uh, turnout last year. It was community-wide. There was a lot of faces that I did not know, which was wonderful. And a few of the people, when they left, they said, well, we hope to see you next year. So that was confirmation for us to reach out to um, City Council and see if we'd be able to do it again. Um, so that is, uh, that's why I'm here, to see if we could do this, this function again. <coughs> as far as changes from last year, everything structurally, physically, um, Wednesday at noon to Friday at noon would be when we would request Kelly Street from Main Street to Jackson to be closed so they can have time to set up their tent and we could come in Thursday and put the function together and then allow them to come in Friday morning and tear the tent down. Um, so I spoke to last year someone asked me um, you checked the box that you spoke to all the local you, you checked all the properties that would be affected and I said yes um, Unbeknownst to me, I thought that was just checking with City Park. So, uh, for the record, I did not complete that last year, but this year I did. I spoke to Dean Jewelers, First Citizens, and Snap Fitness, because that's kind of the parking that would be affected. And I also spoke with Chief Anderson, and he told me to reach out to TJ Services, which I'll do that tomorrow, because I forgot that their back door is right where, right where we'll be. So I will reach out to those guys tomorrow and, you know, let them know what we're doing, and hopefully they'll, they'll be okay with it. Proof of insurance will, I will have that soon, and I'll email it to Trudy if that works, and then she can get it to the rest of you guys. Um, we still plan to have the horse and carriage ride, uh, the coffee, the hot chocolate, the cookies, the bars, and the singing on the inside of the tent. And uh, Noelle's the woman with the horse and carriage ride. She carries her own insurance for, for her, her part of it. So we feel that we've, uh, we've done our, our part to lock everything up, make it seamless, and now we're just asking for the approval to, to move forward. Questions for Joe? I'd some move with the caveat that it's, you know, approved with TGA service to have the entire street blocked off for that yes, time. Yes, sir. And the chief. So. Second. Any further questions or discussion? Clerk will call the roll. Starr. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Request is approved. I know I went last year. I think I might have been one of the ones that said, I hope you do this again next year. So awesome. It's good to see it happening again. I think it was a nice community event and you know during the Christmas season. So Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Next is a consideration of Resolution 17218, approving preliminary plans and specs and setting a <coughs> date for letting and public hearing on the HMA project. John, you want to tell us about that? Yes. Cool. Next year we're going to be improving uh, North Jackson Street on South Main Street. The limits on the project, the South Main Street, and that's from uh, Blunt up to Lane, and uh, South Main Street is from Fifth Street down to about a block south of 9th Street. Altogether, uh, the two projects <coughs> get together are 3,650 feet in length. So, uh, what this is, we're calling this, it's a mill and fill project where we'll remove three inches of the existing asphalt surface. We will um, make repairs where needed to curb and gutter to um, improve drainage and um, then uh, if there's any patching that needs to be done, we'll make those patches. Then we will put back in three inches of asphalt for a new driving surface. 
Um, throughout the project, at all the intersections, there will be a pedestrian curb ramps will be put in. And uh, also on South Main Street, we're going to uh, do a storm sewer extension, uh, basically from uh, the area of uh, Parkside Development. And we'll run that south to the big storm sewer that's uh, there that parallels the Charlie Western Trail. This will take drainage uh, from basically 9th Street, Parkside, South Johnson, 10th, part of uh, Charles Street. All that area it currently <coughs> drains down to Main Street, down uh, north on Main Street, through uh, down 6th, 6th Street, and through that area. All that area will then be taken off that storm sewer and uh, moved over to the um, that big, <coughs> big storm sewer along the Charlie Western Trail. Um, the funding is coming through the uh, Department of Transportation, so they are in charge of the letting, and um, they'll be let through the statewide letting in February. And that letting is on uh, February 19th. Then following the letting, the DOT will go through, check through everything, and make a concurrence on the award. And so what, we will, what we're asking the council is setting March 18th at 6 p.m. as a time and date for um, a public hearing, at which time then the council will uh, concur in the award. So we'd recommend resolution 172-18 setting the uh, letting and hearing dates and approving the preliminary plans for the um, North Jackson South Main Street project. Any questions for John? John, will the storm sewer changes you're talking about, will that alleviate some of the problems we have in that area on the storm sewer? I won't go that far. Well, it'll, t it'll take off some of the, that loading because some of it? that uh, area, um, you know, like where Parkside is, mm -hmm. South Johnson, that area, that residential area, um, now it currently drains, you know, to Maine, then down 6th Street. It's going to uh, be taken off that storm sewer and put okay. over to the um, that bigger line. Yeah. Hopefully it'll help with some of that ponding that goes on in South Maine between, what is it, about 6th and 7th, <coughs> somewhere in there. And p part of this project, too, is uh, new intakes. Um, you know, right now they're just currently inadequate intakes. Um, so the uh, intake capacity will be increased, but... Uh, We'll still have uh, st um, the storm sewer. The same size pipe for the existing sewer, but yeah. hopefully if some of that stuff to the south gets out of there, that'll help take yeah. some of the pressure off that because mm -hmm. that can get to be a pretty good little <coughs> lake in there when it rains heavy. Yeah. I move for 172.18. Second. Any further discussion? Call the roll. Jaeger. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Star. Aye. Resolution 172.18 passes, and as we're going to be talking about later on our goal setting, that was one of our goals that we talked about was stormwater issues, so it's nice to be able to address, at least start to address some of those issues with this project. So next is consideration of Resolution 173.18 relating to financing of a proposed project to be undertaken by the city. Steve? Yeah, what this is, this is a resolution that um, essentially will allow us to be reimbursed for these upfront costs um, associated with the fiber project. Um, basically, you know, we're at the point now where we're going through the engineering design layout um, of the fiber of the home project, and we are expending those costs, which we anticipate to be around $365,000 in total. Uh, we're expending that on a general fund be able to be reimburse ourselves um, for those expenses through the long-term financing for the entire project, we need to set up a resolution to state that we were going to do that. This is what that resolu resolution does. Um, like I said, you know, we're anticipating that to be around $365,000. Um, we've set this at $2 million just as an arbitrary number to not to exceed, so we're covered if we do have additional costs for whatever that may be prior to the project being funded uh, from a long-term standpoint. Uh, so um, that's how that number was selected. Um, the total project we're thinking, at least at this point, it's going to be somewhere around $12 million. We'll find, that, we'll find out for sure once the business plan and the engineering and everything is done. Uh, but this is to help recover those um, upfront costs for, for doing the soft work, if you will, consultant and engineering. Any questions anyone has for Steve? <coughs> I'd so move for approval. Second. 
Further discussion, anybody? <coughs> Call the roll. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. Yeager. Aye. Next is Resolution 175.18, approving an agreement with the Iowa DOT for the project that John just talked about a little bit ago. <coughs> yes, what, uh, this is in regard to the uh, um, North Jackson South Main Street project. The, um, the agreement is the project agreement between the city and the Iowa DOT. And this is, um, since it's a federally funded project, um, the agreement is necessary to uh, d um, lays out the financing <coughs> of the project. Also, that it stipulates the, uh, the that we will follow DOT standards and design requirements as well as uh, how we'll administer the construction of the project. Um, and as we talked, it's on North Jackson and South Main. Now the um, difference, this is a little bit different project than what we've had in the past. Uh, last year the uh, Iowa legislature developed, a, they called it a swap program. And swap funds, basically in essence, uh, federal dollars flowed into the state um, through the DOT and the DOT distributed them out to the uh, counties and the cities. And last year, a change was made where the uh, federal dollars will come in and the DOT will use those federal dollars for their road work and in exchange for that state dollars will be distributed out to the uh, counties and the cities. The, uh, the, the thought being is it will save the counties and cities money, uh, money and time um, being able to use state dollars rather than federal aid dollars. Uh, also this under SWAP we can um, well, in the past, always um, federal aid projects were 80-20 split. The city would have to pay for 20% of the project, and with SWAP, we can um, request up to 100%, which is what we did on this project. So the agreement pays up to $920,000. So uh, I'd recommend approval of Resolution 175-18, <coughs> approving the agreement and authorizing the mayor to sign the, sign the agreement on behalf of the city. I know this is for 920, John, but what's the total cost in the project? Uh, right now, the estimate's 880,000. I was going to say I thought it was roughly going to take care of hopefully the whole thing. Yeah. If we don't have too many change orders or whatever. I think it's a good deal. I'd so move. Second. Any further discussion? Call the roll. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Star. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Resolution 175.18 is passed, and we'll consider then Resolution 176.18, which is setting a public hearing for Ordinance 1123, the rezoning of the 500 North <coughs> Grand Building block. Sure. The um, Charles City Community School District, they've been uh, working to, um, to sell the 500 North Grand Building, the old middle school building. Uh, to a developer for use as um, residential uh, apartments. And so what they've done, they've submitted a rezoning request for the entire property. The, right now the um, property is zoned R2, which is general residence district, which is for um, single family dwellings. And so in order to convert the, um, the building <coughs> into apartments or condominiums, it requires a rezoning to R3, which is for multifamily units. Now, in this area, everything east of um, North Grand is zoned R2, except for that small, where Fox and Floors, flooring used to be, that's B1. Now, on the other side of um, North Grand, west of the middle school site, um, it's zoned B2 as well as R3, right across the street from 500 North Grand building, it's R3. So this is, this rezoning is really just an expansion of that existing um, multifamily area. Now the Planning and Zoning Commission, they met last Wednesday. They held a public hearing and they are recommending uh, the City Council approve the rezoning request. So first the Council needs to set a date and time for a public <coughs> hearing. And um, that r this resolution will set December 3rd at 6 p.m. as a uh, date and time for the um, public hearing. So I'd recommend approval of Resolution 176.18. Any 
Any questions on this rezoning? <coughs> I right, so move. Hearing. Second. It's nice that there's already R3 in the area. It's not like we're just plunking something down in the middle. Of exactly, yeah. Where right. there's nothing else like that around, so that's good. It fits in. <coughs> fits in and hopefully will be a good use for that building right. too. So any further discussion? I have a motion. You do. Motion Clerk will call the roll. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Resolution one seventy six eighteen in that public hearing will be at our next December third meeting. December third, yes. Next is resolution 17718 approving application for a water quality initiative grant. Steve, you have this one? Yeah, this is uh, something from the Iowa Department of Land Stewardship, or known as IDALS. Um, it's called the Water Quality Initiative Grant, and basically what it is, it, it's a grant that's designed to help uh, um, address water uh, quality issues. Um, in various water sources, so trying to get that nutrient loading out of the water sources. Um, they, IDOL has actually reached out uh, to the city and asked me if we might be interested in this, uh, knowing that this is a 50% matched grant that will pay up to $100,000 for a water quality project. And, and since we're doing our wastewater treatment plant, that we get a sponsor project grant. With that, we can use the sponsor project dollars to leverage to match with the 50% on this. So um, long story short, we're able to, to leverage additional funding into uh, another water quality project. And uh, a couple of the, we, we looked at uh, several projects when, we, uh, when uh, we spoke with them here a couple weeks ago, and two of them kind of came to the top, one of them being a potential water quality project in and around Wildwood Park, but the golf course um, with all the water that's coming through that park, um, looking for ways to um, you reduce the nu nutrient loading that's in that water and then the additional benefit for us is there is to reduce the water quantity so the flooding issues just addressing that too um, there's a component for education and outreach and so that would be a, a good spot to get a lot of a lot of visibility on the project and would score well I think with the, with the, uh, with the grand tours um, the other project is something that we've discussed and looked at um, with our recent discussions on the stormwater issues and that's the water coming off of the hill off of Glenwood off Hillside Drive up that direction um, we could potentially be looking at a project there that would put in um, uh, best practice water quality water quantity uh, retention to, to help slow the water down or retain the water in that area um, that would take some additional cooperation from from property owners, uh, but that could be a good way to possibly fund fund that project as well. Um, so, so those are a couple of the ones that we're looking at. Um, I see we did get a response from IDALS as they uh, they were going to take those two projects and, and look at at the watersheds that that feed them uh, on a broader scale to kind of get more information on that. But what I'm seeking tonight is council's permission to be able to apply for this grant. It's due December 7th. Um, it's just a quick two-page grant, and uh, IDOLS will be working with us to to write the grant. And ultimately, if we're funded, um, we will. If we make it through pre-application, then we'll be asked to apply for the full application, which would be in February. And um, so, just asking for council's permission to apply for that grant. Questions? I live in that neighborhood. I'd be all in favor. <laughs> in, for huh? helping your neighbors, right? <laughs> it doesn't actually affect me, but it affects some good friends. Let's still move. We apply. I have to abstain from voting because of. <coughs> you don't have no, to do it. No. no. You, you can you can choose to if you want to. Mm -hmm. No, you don't have to abstain since this is just a, an application for, right. for a grant. And we don't know what project specifically we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. it's second. Second. A second. Any further discussion? Clerk will call the roll. Starr. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Resolution 177.18 is approved and we'll move to Resolution 178.18 which is amending contract with Niacog for our 
Regional Transit Services. Steve. Yep, these uh, next two uh, agenda items are uh, basically addressing the, uh, um, the ability to add in the, the um, Mason City <coughs> service into the transit. Um, this is something that we've been, we've been talking about and it's something that we've been being asked about since the city really took over the transit in, in July and, and really before that. So we wanted to uh, get the city operation up under its feet. We're kind of, we're kind of getting there. Um, we've had some um, discussions with, with uh, the County Board of Supervisors, Doug Cam specifically, to see how we could get that county service back involved. And in, in discussing with them, with um, Circle K, who's doing our contracted um, dispatch of this, um, and, and Kevin Kramer from Nyacog, we've, uh, we've, we've figured out um, that uh, adding, we can, you know, it's, it's likely that we can uh, add a bus that will be um, uh, predetermined routes from Charles City to Mason City. Um, we don't know exactly how many trips a day or how many days a week that's going to be, but it's going to be on a fairly regular basis. Um, so what this agreement does is it amends our agreement that we approved with NIACOG this last uh, July, and it, it includes the not only the, the discussion of the city service that we offer, but then a, a, an addition of the county service. And the county service will add one bus, and all the costs for the county service, um, um, minus ticket sales, those those uh, the operating shortfall, will be reimbursed by NICOG at 100 percent. At 100 percent, whereas the city service that we do, they reimburse at 50 percent. But this additional um, service to to uh, the to Mason City um, is able to be uh, reimbursed at 100 percent. So there's there's no additional cost to the city. Um, the county and Circle K are, have their own agreement that they're working out for additional compensation for, for Circle K's involvement to, to bring this uh, on board. So, um, yeah, so this is pretty exciting that we'll be able to start offering uh, uh, the uh, transit service to Mason City uh, once again uh, with, with approval of this, uh, this agreement and resolution. Questions? Do you know what kind of a fee is going to be charged for ticket price on that, Steve? I believe it is five dollars for um, general public. For the general public, for rides to Mason City, it's four dollars, no, three dollars for the elderly. Three for elderly, disabled, and disabled. Correct. That's mm -hmm. one way. Each one way. way. Each, way. Can, Each way. I can get a little cheaper than you, Dwayne. <laughs> if there were more options out there, it would be helpful because there just there, there aren't, and right. people people are really right. really I mean, need the service. That's still a pretty reasonable price for that's right. You know that much transportation. So move. Second. Any further discussion? You can hardly drive a car there for that much. No, mm -hmm. you can't. Believe me. <laughs> you do it every day. Huh? I do it every day. <laughs> yeah. Spend a lot more than that. <coughs> Clerk will call the roll. Jaeger. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Star. Aye. Um, 78.18 is passed, and then 179.18 is <coughs> approving the amendment, amendment to um, the contract to Circle K, then. The, the previous one was with NICOG. This is for Circle K for the same issue. Right. This this is pretty straightforward. This just uh, updates the language to make sure it includes references to the county service. Uh, mm -hmm. The amount that we pay Circle K remains unchanged because that additional cost is going to be paid by the county, and that's the agreement they have directly with Circle K. And even though they're not here, Dan and Tammy were here the other night at the work session, and they're fully in uh, cooperation with this and agreement with it that I think it's a good thing. Yep. Yeah, I want to make sure that Tammy was able, Tammy and Dan were able to mm -hmm. handle this and take this on. Uh, right. that, that additional cost that's going to be coming in might help help them hire an additional staff person to help with the dispatching. They're, they're kind of at a point now where they could almost use one more part-time person that could maybe flex as a bus driver. So, you know, whether they get hired as a, as a partial dispatcher and um, with Circle K and then partial bus driver with us, the city that remains to be seen, but uh, but yeah, they're very much on board. Um, forwarded. I talked to Tammy in person and via email today, and she didn't have any concerns with this. So. 
I remember P Tammy's comment the other night was, yeah, we were planning on doing this after a year, and here it is three months into it, and we're <laughs> but, <laughs> ramping up. But, but it's good that it's all going well yes, that we can yeah, do it. That we're able to do it. That's right. I yep. so move. Second. Further discussion? <clears throat> Clerk will call the roll. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. Yeager. Aye. Next is consideration of a motion to approve the goal setting report <coughs> from our goal setting session a week or two ago. Steve, do you have comments on this? Well, there's a, I know it, um, everybody's had a chance to go through the goal setting report and make sure it's everything they've ever wanted. <laughs> so if you have any thoughts or suggestions on things that need to be changed, now's <coughs> the time to uh, talk about those and amend those in. I know the mayor and I chatted a little bit just about some further definition on a couple things, <coughs> and I know there's some um, total vote tallies that that uh, are a little different than what he and I's notes actually had. So it doesn't change the ranking of anything, but it really kind of gives further definition to it. So um, I know some of those things we're going to look to to change. But the one thing I did want to mention, um, you know, from our last set of goals from 2018, you know, everything that's on that list of goals. Um, from 2016, I should say, that we amended here this last year, made it back onto the report in one way, shape, or form, with the exception of um, the, you know, the city hall remodel relocation. Now, I, I, in speaking to almost all of you, it was you know some thought that that might be a given, thought some thought not, but you know as far as you know what are we going to do, or you know it, it might not be a priority for us anymore, and that's that's fine. But you know, I think we need to not lose sight that we need to, you know, continue to, you know, research or look for options that are either we're either going to be staying here or we're going to be moving or we're going to be doing something, you know, because we've looked at, we've looked at the at the at the jail uh, the courthouse location as an option and we said that that wasn't going to be the right fit. You know, we've talked about 500 North Grand and that looks to be going in a different direction for a better use that way. So, you know, we still need to figure out what we're going to do. And so I think it would be a good idea to have it in the report somewhere to say that we're at least going to continue to research and look at ideas and options or however you'd want to word that. Um, but aside from that and some of those uh, um, um, uh, smaller technical changes that the mayor and I talked about, I don't know if anybody saw anything else that, that they'd want to uh, include or was was off base. Otherwise, I, I thought Pat did a really good job. I, I, I thought the goal setting process, you know, it's the first time we've worked with Pat. I thought it went really well. Um, it was a long night, but we had a lot of stuff to talk about, so I thought it was a good process. Steve and I, like I say, discussed it and we talked about the, and I guess our <coughs> conclusion that maybe that would go under Exhibit C. Um, Significant initiatives, programs, and policies for yeah. the uh, city hall research options. And then the other one that I had was on, on um, city council's list of givens. We didn't include the Charlie Western Bridge re replacement under capital projects. <coughs> I guess I thought that was a given that we were going to continue along those lines. So that would be the other suggestion I would like to propose that we add to the report. <coughs> uh, the Charlie Western Trail Bridge is under Exhibit D, Top Priority Capital Projects and Equipment Purchases, Complete Charlie Western Trail Bridge, Item Number 4. Yeah, I just, I mean, we also have, I and mean, we have the, I guess I just didn't know if it was a list, if it was in the Givens or it should be in that other one. I yeah, guess. like I said, I don't know. It's I guess the only reason I put the Givens is we, it was like we, we talked, talked about, about this one. We, right. It was a carryover from last year, I guess. I, as long as it's in there, <coughs> I think that's the important thing. Yeah, it definitely needs to be in there. And I, yeah, and it I, is there too. I agree that the City Hall uh, project needs to stay in there someplace too. <coughs> like you say, I don't know where it all fits in. There's so many other projects going on right now. And our community can only stand so many and things happening all at the same time, so right. we have to be cognizant of that, but we still have a problem in dealing with this building, this facility, so I think it needs to stay out there, stay on the list somewhere. I, I would agree. I don't know if the rest of the council agrees to that, <coughs> making that change before we approve it. 
I, I agree with that. Well, that was where my voting went. Is anything that was already on our list <clears throat> didn't get my vote because that was already the, the word "given" was kind of a a flexible used term uh, at at the goal setting that if it's something we're already continuing to look at or that we already were working on, Charlie Western, you know, City Hall, those are stuff that, that are already a top priority that we haven't completed yet. So those sh should be a, a forward moving item. Okay. That's how I voted based on that, okay. that uh, perspective. Anyone opposed to adding <coughs> that item to the list? I would move to approve with the addition of those two items. Second. Any <coughs> further discussion? So we want to add the Charlie Western to the list of givens. Council. What's your definition of given in this situation? Well, that's, I mean, that's what got us here in this place. Yeah. The report breaks out a little bit differently than, than it has in the past. So, you know, you know where, where, where we have, you know. To me, as long as they're in there, it doesn't really matter exactly which, where. Which but yeah. if you want to move it from where it's at to the given area, fine with me. I care less. Maybe we'll continue research on that as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is that a given? Yeah. That's a given. How about that? Let's we'll just that's vote before we all get in trouble. I was going to say, I think it's time to vote. Sounds like a given to me. Very cool. Call the roll. Yes. Hammond. Aye. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Friesman. Aye. All right. <coughs> um, last resolution tonight is number 18018, approving an amendment to a land purchase agreement. Discussion on this one. Yeah, at our, our last meeting when we approved the offer to buy, we I had had some last minute discussion with the owner's attorneys regarding the LP tank and how that was going to be handled. Um, we had requested that the city uh, retain the LP tank with the purchase of the property. They had requested that um, they retain ownership of it and where we, I guess where we kind of settled was that they requested they retain ownership of it but that they would allow the city to use it until completion of the project and removal of the house or demolition of the house. Um, so they provided me with a signed copy of that offer today with that one amendment and we felt it'd be prudent to present that to council since there was <coughs> a, a minor change to the agreement that was approved at the last council meeting. If the house stays, the LP tank stays? They, they've they requested to retain ownership of it, uh, but basically what they said is that it could stay there yeah, until the pl project is completed or until the house is moved or demolished. Is there, is there a cutoff date of August 1? Yeah, correct. Were they? So at that point, they would have to remove the tank? Or correct. Or yeah. if the house stays, they would have to remove the tank? Correct. Yeah. It's such a minor thing. It's like a, it's essentially like dealing with a refrigerator. I mean, yes, it's a, it's a, it's a fixed part of the property, but it's really, it's personal property. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, it's like selling your house and taking the furnace out of it. But well, it's, it's minor and related to the whole contract, so Neko Diamond wouldn't argue with it. I mean, that's just our concern. We want to be able to continue to heat the structure once it's vacated, so that we could, you know, potentially sell it. Actually, move it rather than demolish it. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I would so move. Second. Any further discussion? Clerk will call the roll. Malero. Aye. Starr. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Friesman. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Resolution Aye. approved and then um, Brad, they gave the indication that they were ready to sign then with this one change. They, I have the signed agreement so we'll have uh, you and Trudy sign and then okay. we'll obtain the abstracts of the property and get those updated so Great. we can, so we can get that hopefully process meet that going. December 31st closing date. Good. Good. What's the closing date? Uh, tentatively we had honored before December 31st. Okay. <coughs> All Thanks, right. Brad. I know you did a lot of work on that. Yes. You can see both. A lot of back and forth, so mm -hmm. nice to come to a conclusion. It is. Miscellaneous it is. correspondence tonight. And your honor. Any further attorney's report? Um, I did have, there's an annual Municipal Attorneys Association CLE and meeting that was last Friday, so I attended that in Johnson and always pick up a few few tips from the other attorneys at that, so it's always always beneficial. Good. Next year in Hawaii? 
No. Oh, okay. That was just Fortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> Anything from the city clerk tonight? Oh, always. Oh. <laughs> Here we um, go. <laughs> the next planning session will be on November 26th with a special meeting preceding that to cover some TIF stuff, TIF reports, and some urban renewal plan amendments, that type of a thing. Um, <coughs> City Hall will be closed this Thursday and Friday for Thanksgiving. So you just got opened up. I know. Wish a happy Thanksgiving to everybody. So. All right, Steve. Any um, administrator report tonight? Uh, nothing too much. Just to report that the, you know this last weekend I was in Nashville uh, representing the state of Iowa. Um, I'm currently the state association president. So with that, I get to be part of the ICMA planning committee for the next year's uh, fall conference in Nashville, and that was a uh, really unique experience to help put a conference together, uh, develop sessions, and uh, and start to line up speakers. Um, there's probably about 120 of us there working on it. Huh. And I was on the future, future, futurism and innovation track. So we had to develop, to develop uh, six 60-minute uh, sessions, four 30-minute sessions, and four 60-minute roundtable workshops based on ideas shared from, from across everybody across the, the country and actually internationally. So, so that, was, that was a neat process to be part of. And, uh, and uh, so did that Friday and got back last night. So, so that was enjoyable. I had to learn a lot. It was a lot of work. <laughs> Steve, uh, didn't see Elvis, did you? Summarize no, our he'd left <laughs> the building. Summarize our little talk today about the landfills, about what other oh, people yeah. are doing or yeah, that was one of the neat, one of the, one of the sessions is going to be want not waste not. I came up with the title for that, but basically it's, it's the future of of solid waste. We kind of we broadened it a little bit to be the future of waste, and just hearing how some of these communities deal with it across the country. You know, we're talking with Jerry about how we're opening another cell up in the you know Mitchell County landfill, and but you talk to other communities. One of the persons on our team, they don't know what their community does with garbage on a week to week basis. They have to find which landfills open, what, who will be accepting waste, <coughs> what, what to do with it, uh, and price? it's much more expensive. So it's it's a real, you know, we have different, you know, we have different problems from across the country, but there's a lot of things that we have similar problems on. So but that was one of the ones that stood out, and since Jerry was on that uh, committee, I made sure to tell him about yeah. that. Yeah. So we're, yeah. we're, we're fortunate in that regard, for sure. Jerry gave me a tour a couple of weeks ago. That's quite a facility up there for a few if you haven't had a tour, it's you know, it's one of those things you drive by, you see the sign landfill, but you don't know what's back there until you go back there and look at it. So, on, on that subject, they uh, they've approved that new cell. It's now completed, and DNR has given it its kiss and blessing and all that stuff. So, they're ready to start using it here the first of the year. That's all I have there. Excuse me. Hmm? How many years is that good for? Uh, eight to ten. Under the way it's currently being, the amount of refuse is coming in, eight to ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Not very have, long. They have enough <laughs> land for about 50 years, so. Any other board or commission or committee reports? Not. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Yeah, it's good that about two minutes. Favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thanks oh, for coming, everyone. Wow. We could have talked about cell four or five. Yeah, we could eight. have. I'm disappointed. <laughs> 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 47. Uh, I shouldn't have given her.